Welcome to Greenshine Farmer's video blog about a family starting a farm and going back to the homestead lifestyle. Hey guys, today we are going to do a video on the paper pot transplanter. We're going to tell you what it is, how to use it, and how it can help save you time and money on your farm. Coming up today on Greenshine Farmers. Alright, so I apologize for the rain, can't really help it, but we wanted to get this video out, so I'm just going to try to talk kind of loud. Um, this is our setup here for the paper pot, and uh, you can get the kit at Paper Pot Co, uh, paperpot.co, and it pretty much comes with everything you need. Um, so that includes these stretcher bars, um, the little honeycomb chains, the cedar, and also um, these kind of frame so basically it's, it's very easy to do and it's, it's also very quick um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your paper chains and your stretcher bars and you're just going to insert them down here into the side like that all right now once you've got your stretcher bars you're, it's going to be like this. It's kind of a honeycomb shape. And you then just want to line it up with these little things here. And uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. I don't know if you can see this, but the way it is, you've got two that are close together here. I'll kind of take it off to show you. You've got these two, right? And then you've got evenly spaced ones here. So what you're going to want to do for these two to make sure that it all lines up is you're going to want to put those honeycombs one, two, like that. And then this one should fit up here and everything should slide into place. If it doesn't, uh, you'll know it. It won't look right. So after you do that, you just slide your stretcher bars out. You take one of these trays and you just put it on the back end like that. Okay, now we're ready to fill it with soil. important that you use a quality potting soil. Um, we've used stuff in the past uh, that was mostly peat uh, and, and uh, perlite based and I just don't like it. You've got a really small cell with these so you want to make sure you're putting in a high quality potting soil that's going to hold moisture but also um, you know give good airflow so you're not getting root rot. So we actually use a uh, local guy here in town, Dirtcraft Organics, and they are fantastic. It's a really, really quality potting mix, and we've been getting excellent results. So just wanted to say that first of all. After you've got your tray filled up, you're going to take this little dibbler tool, and it's got 144-odd little dibbler things, and you're just going to set it like this and get it nice and pushed down, and you're ready to roll. Um, Anybody who's done it the old way, where we used to use pencils or we just take our fingers, I mean, you can see what a time saver that is. We're using, uh, we're, we're doing lettuce here, so you're going to want to get pelleted seed. Um, it's basically just seed with a little coating on it, like that. And once you have your seed, you're going to pour it into your cedar. Right? And then all you're going to do is make sure that you're pushing this way on this thing. Um, otherwise, the seeds are going to fall right through. And then all you're doing is just kind of shaking it and getting the seeds into their little holes. Um, you also want to make sure that it's dry. You see them sticking up here. It's, I mean, we tried to wipe it off, but it's just wet. And then you're just going to move over here, line it up with your tray and then just one smooth move like that. Sometimes they'll stick and you just give them a little tap and they fall right through. And then you take it off and boom, the tray's ready to be covered. Um, this is what helps the tray slide and keeps it in place. If you dump the tray upside down to get the seeds out, this will fall out and it's so small that you'll probably lose it. So you just want to keep be mindful of that. Um, your soil on top of your seeds, you're just going to pull this out. Everything stays in place because the soil is holding it. And then, you know, we just take a popsicle stick and we'll write the variety and the date and we'll just kind of stick that in here. 
All right, so now I should mention that they come in multiple sizes, these chains. And so for lettuce, at, you know, we want about six inch spacing. You're gonna go with the, uh, the 30315, but we can also do something like beets, which you don't need to have pelleted. And for that, we're gonna do a 30310, which should be two inch spacings. And so for that, you know, same thing, you just pour your beet seeds in here and we'll go into the little divots. And the great thing about this is that you don't have to thin. This should put them at the perfect spacing that they need to be so you're not out there thinning. And uh, the other good thing is beets kind of take a long time to germinate and get going. So this way you're not taking up real estate in your field. You can keep them in the greenhouse until they're already, you know, ready to be transplanted. So. Now after we water them, we bring them into our walk-in cooler. Now a little trick is, um, for lettuce anyway, it likes to be at about 60 degrees to germinate. So we just set our cool bot right here to 60 degrees. And uh, just kind of put the trays down there. And we get really good germination this way. You know, in years past, I could never figure out, you know, why my lettuce seedlings never germinated in the summer. And it's just, you know, they really like that 60 degree temperature. So this is just kind of a little extra thing that we do to ensure better germination. Uh, but yeah, it seems to work. Okay, now this tool takes a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of nuance and a little bit of a learning curve. Um, and that kind of just goes with getting your depth right. So here is the depth setting. And so you can see, you kind of loosen it and you can put it up here. And the lower you drop it, that's gonna give you a deeper furrow. So depending on your soil type, you're gonna to have to kind of play around with this. Um, it works best for a really nice, tilthy soil. It just buries it a little bit better. This bed is a little bit still clay, kind of chunky, so it'll hit some clay chunks and kind of pop up. So if you see, um, some of these didn't get fully buried. Um, so what you'll kind of do then is just to go after and just sort of bury them by hand, which you know takes maybe five minutes. Um, so it's not really a huge deal and it's a lot faster than transplanting by hand. Okay, so you're gonna wanna find the start of the chain and you're just gonna kinda peel this off. Now some of these guys didn't germinate too well so I'm actually gonna just pinch this off, set it to the side. We're gonna, if you have gaps, you can always kinda pop these out. You know, they just kinda pop out the root ball and you can put them wherever your gap is and just bury them like that. So. Um, I'm gonna peel it until we get to the first real chain, which is right here. Once you've got your setup, you're gonna take the, the uh, beginning, the first chain, and you're just gonna kind of feed it down through here. Right past these wheels, and take something like a screwdriver I found works well, and you're just gonna kind of stake it down. And this is gonna kind of keep that chain in place, right? And you'll get up here, and you're just gonna pull it like this. In, you're going to want to kind of grab it by the handle and just kind of move it like this and let that furrow keep going until you get to the end of your chain which is about right here just break that off pick this up set it over here and then you can just kind of bury this chain manually Okay, so yeah, we're at the end of our row. And even after, you know, even with the chain breaking here or there or having to bury them by hand, this, I mean, this takes your time down from transplanting from probably two to three hours to maybe 20 minutes. So, I mean, this is a heck of a tool. Um, so these are 144 foot chains, I believe. And so what I have found is that three trays should do 100 foot bed. That's a 30 inch by foot anyway thank you guys for watching I hope you got a lot of value out of this episode if you have any questions or comments just leave them down below um, and, and you know I'll try to get back to you uh, you know just to kind of wrap up really love this tool I mean this is 
For a small farm like ours, this tool is, is essential because we do a ton of head lettuce and we've transplanted by hand and then we've used this and the time savings is just significant. So even though there's a little bit of a learning curve, once you start to get it dialed in, it's, it, it's well worth it. So um, anyway, um, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. If you guys like this video and you'd like to see more like it, leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.